You know, I really wasn't planning on making a video on what I've been building out over the last couple weeks for at least another week or so. I have been working on a massive full stack open source SvelteKit e-commerce app. We're using SvelteKit, Drizzle, Terso, Resend, uh, Cloudinary, tons of other really exciting technologies in here. I'm very, very excited for this project, but this is most certainly the most ambitious and large scale thing I've ever built in SvelteKit. And what's really cool about this is I'm actually gonna use this site in production once it's done. I have something, I've been working on a project with some family and it's just, it's kind of fun. It's not a huge thing or anything like that. But you know, we wanted to build an e-commerce site for that. And I figured, you know, this would be a great opportunity to do it for the channel. So I have been working on building that out over the last couple of weeks and we're getting pretty close to the end of it. And you know, the plan, and this is still what we're going to do and still is the plan, um, to build out a ton or to make a ton of deep dives on this. So there are so many different intricate pieces within this app and so many different things that there's going to be a lot of really awesome deep dives to do in here and a lot of really great things to talk about. But as I've been building it, I have learned a lot of different things and I've also kind of you know, there have been some things that have come up that I think are really useful and are worth making some smaller videos about. So that's what this video is and that's what a couple other videos coming out over the next couple of days are gonna be about. I really wanna show you guys some of the things that have come out as I've been building this and give you some tips from my experience on how to better structure and build out and make these spell kit apps. Remember, this is the most ambitious and serious thing I've ever made. I'm not a 30 year spell kit industry veteran. I've barely been alive for 21 years, let alone 30. So like, you know, I, I'm not the most seasoned professional in all this stuff. I'm still learning as many of you are, but you know, I think there's been a lot here that has really, uh, a lot here that's worth talking about. So I wanna show you guys this. This is the admin page for the little e-commerce site we're building out here. Uh, the UI is not great. You're just gonna have to bear with me on that one. Uh, as most of you know, I come from a backend background and my UIs suck a lot. Um, here's my very inspired landing page right here. Um, we might, we'll make this nicer before the final thing goes out, but you know, for right now, it's basic UI tailwind thrown in here. It's serviceable, but I was building out this admin page and initially my, the way I was initially going to build this out was very, um, I was reaching for, I wanted to build this in a sort of way that was very similar to how I built React applications. I used to build my Next.js apps, how I've done all that stuff at work and in other projects I've built. So my instinct was to go ahead and make, okay, so we'll just make an admin page here and then we're gonna have this little side nav over here and then I'm gonna create two child components of that, which will be a products page, quote unquote, but it's just a component and then an orders page, quote unquote, and that's just a component. And that's how I initially expected to do it. You make those two things, you can run the data fetching within each component, but I quickly realized, you know, this kind of sucks. This seems really stupid. I was having to like write full REST API endpoints on the back end. It wasn't nearly as clean and as seamless as just using the X, the like load function. As many of you guys know, if you've watched my previous Felkid videos, one of my favorite things about it is like this little export let data thing where I can just create my loader function over here. Uh, this is just wrapping some database calls within Drizzle. We will talk about all of this in the deep dive, but not right now. Um, so it's really nice to be able to just expose and grab my data, get end-to-end -end type safety and not have to worry about any of this stuff. Uh, you can imagine when I was extracting stuff into components and I was trying to fetch on mount and do all this stuff, it started to feel really crappy. You know, I, cause you want to use that loader function, but when I was using these two as just child components, the question became, okay, so how do I want to do this? So you can imagine it really sucks pulling in, you know, we have our one loader function here. So imagine within this data we had, we had to figure out what we wanted to pull in here. So like we could pull in all of our products or all of our orders, um, or bring in both at the same time, but that seems pretty inefficient to send all that data or so then maybe we'd move the data fetching, fetching down into the client component but that would kind of suck because then we'd have to like run a fetch request. We'd have to put an on mount up here. So all the options just felt really gross and crappy on this. And I was a little confused, honestly, because I, I was like, you know, how do you actually do this? And then when I was reading through the documentation, going over like roots and stuff like this, that most of you have hopefully been yelling at your screen about this the whole time, I realized I'm an idiot and forgot about the whole layout system and page system and the beautiful way SvelteKit routing works. So that's what I wanted to show you guys in this video and really try and give you a real world example of is just how freaking good the routing system is and why this file-based routing can be really, really nice. 
over here within the directory, I've got all this different stuff. The one we're going to be focusing on here is going to be this admin directory. So within the admin directory, I have orders, products, and I have my layout.svelte. This is the key. Up here within this layout.svelte, this is where, uh, if you look at the URL here, the URL is admin slash products. So the layout right here is going to apply to both the orders page and the products page down in here. So what I just did in here is I created my little nav switcher over here, and these are now actually pages. So instead of creating separate components for these, I created separate pages for these to create sort of nested pages in here with a nested layout, which creates this really, really clean system of doing everything and allows me to maintain that end-to-end -end type safety with my layout.server, my um, ultimately my page.server, all these different things. I get to keep that while still keeping this as like a universal piece within my routing system. So we went ahead and created this nav bar over here. Then we just set up this little box right here and then put a slot in. And this slot is where my actual pages will go. So I haven't fully built out the orders page yet. Basically what this will do is just fetch from the database all the different orders and then we can run the fulfillment process. See whether or not they've been processed, where they came from, all this stuff. We are using Stripe, so we're heavily relying on them for all that stuff. Again, this will be detailed within the deep dives later on. But for right now, we're just going ahead and doing all of this stuff. Um, so on this page itself, within the products page, I have the page dot spelt within products. So for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, definitely read the documentation on Svelkin and its routing. But the way it works is it's all file based. So whenever you go to admin slash products, you will it'll route you to the page dot spelt within that directory. So it's going to render this page.svelte, and this page.svelte is going to get rendered within this box. So all this content is in here, but what's even nicer is I can attach a page.server to that box. So this page, this load function is only going to load when I go to my products page, but when I go to my orders page, it's not going to fire that load function. So now I can run my data loading attached to each page with this nice nested routing and UI, and it's just for the places where it needs to be. So here I'm just getting all my products. I go down within here. I can print out all my products, handle all this stuff, and we can go even further with this. We don't just have to do it in here. We can also create our, um, we can add more pages within this system. So right now we're on admin slash products. You can see over here we have um, admin slash new. This new directory right here is going to be where we can actually create new products. So you can't see it because my face is blogging it, but there's a new button right here. And it takes us to this super simple creation wizard. Uh, the Stripe product ID and price ID are super key here, and that's how we're making a lot of this work. Again, stay tuned for the deep dive. Um, but here, this you can see is admin slash product slash new. So we're switching out the page.svelte that's being rendered for this one. So this is the one that's going to go ahead and have all of the different images and all of the different, um, this is the one that's going to have the actual form to create all this stuff and will replace what's being rendered within this box. So effectively what I sort of realized and what I'm trying to convey in this video is that you can use these layouts and use these, use the fancy file based routing stuff to create really complicated UIs without having to create a bajillion different components and do tons of prop drilling and a bunch of nasty stuff there. You can just do it all through um, Svelkid's routing system, which is super, super awesome. This is a great system. Um, this little creation page is pretty simple. Um, actually, I think this is a great time to uh, talk about. This uh, entire series is actually partnered and sponsored by Cloudinary. I initially wasn't really planning on doing that, and you're going to hear Cloudinary sponsored for this video for quite a while now. But initially, when I was working on this, I didn't have a sponsor or anything, and I was like, you know... I wanted to build out this whole system and I've been using Cloudinary at my nine to five and in some other projects for like a year now, really like them. And just out of the blue, they reached out to me and they're like, hey, you wanna do something partner? And I'm like, well, I'm doing this project and I was already using you guys in it. Would you be interested in sponsoring it? And they're like, yeah, sure. So now nothing's changed, just I get to pay rent now. And uh, yeah, so Cloudinary is sponsoring this. Uh, the upload button here is using their new Svelte SDK. Super awesome, check it out down in the link below. And uh, we'll talk way more about how to integrate this stuff and how to optimize all of our images, make them look super crisp and nice, and uh, really build out a beautiful site. You can see the beginnings of my product page in here, doing some testing on the image resolutions. You know, again, we're gonna make the UI look a lot nicer. Well, nicer as far as, as nice as I can make a UI look, but we're gonna improve this a ton and I'm super excited to sort of uh, get deeper into that stuff. But yeah, 
Uh, really in this video, I just wanted to show you guys the routing stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and make another video here talking about the, um, talking about how I set up my uh, form actions and I'm running the database calls, or sorry, not the database calls, how I set up my form actions, how we're using progressive enhancement, how we're getting sort of fancy with all this stuff and our error handling, um, and also how we're getting some type safety and all this stuff. So you wanna see a quick little breakdown on that, make sure you guys are subscribed. I will drop that very soon. And uh, yeah, I look forward to more of this stuff coming very soon. You can, I'll have the link to the project down below. You can follow along. It is completely free and open source. Uh, use it as you want. Uh, make sure if you guys have any questions, you join the Discord and I will uh, talk to you very soon.